That's what satisfied monkey. <laughs> Uh, yes, Ryan Cox. He is the artist. He is uh, one of those guys who just has a vibe, man. His sound is cool. We're carving tracks. Killer Kenny, they sound great, man. Thank you. Go to that top note, please. Do it again, though. Let me see if it works better. What it all began with was uh, was being a vocalist. So I mean, I, I'm definitely rooted foremostly within being a vocalist because everybody in my family sings, and it it was something that I never realized that uh, I thought everybody could do that. Uh, Ryan, Ryan, a very unique individual. Yeah, the guy who wrote the song is leaving us high and dry on the floor. <laughs> Very intelligent, extremely intelligent. He had all these ideas of not just songs, but like album concepts. And in my mind, you know, like, well, hold on a second. You know, people have been asking me, well, what style, what vibe, as you said. I would say uh, it's got a little bit of the Steely Dan thing going musically, but vocally, he's got his own thing, maybe like a, a little Jim Morrison there, but. Right, right, right. Side of the I wish I could hold it steady for him. <laughs> and then I'll just do a straight watch. A little too anxious. <laughs> I'm the sax guy. Yeah. I'm, the, I'm putting all the saxes. <laughs> on the on the project. All I the guess. sax and violins. All the sax and violins, yeah. Not no, not violin. I heard the vibe from the raw etchings. This so that's good. And we use our ears, we make our own charts and the, the arrangement sort of comes together in the studio, which is a really good it's refreshing. Our sound is really unique because of the combination of players as well, you know, and Preston knew who to call for. The producer, is, that job is a really important job because he's got to, like, bring some kind of vision and organization yeah. to the artist. It's kind of like being a chef in a kitchen, you know, you can have all your recipes there for what you're going to make, but until you go to the store and get the ingredients, and then you put it together. And Chris, the engineer, and I were talking, it sounds like that first tune that like, we're a bunch of like southern boys down in Austin, Texas, man. I love making records. I've done it for 21 years now, starting at RCA Victor in Studio A when I was 19. And I still get the same feeling 21 years later when I'm recording Booker T or uh, Mary Wilson from the Supremes or B.B. King or whoever I happen to be lucky enough to work with that day, I still get the same feeling that I did 21 years ago. It's still that tingly thing of we're getting ready to watch something brilliant and maybe there's only 10 people in the world that are going to get to witness this. I, uh, I really love to put words together in ways that people find uncommon and, and, and intriguing and even, you know, mysterious to the extent where 
a lot of times people uh, find things in songs that I never intended, and I'm like, oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Oh, yeah, one more verse. <laughs> Singer-songwriter hard at work. He's recording, and he's also writing the song we're about to record, so check him out. <laughs> Busy man. Whenever I write a song, um, I always, from from some point, sometimes it's it's very initially, but always in the formulation of a song, I, I develop a, a painting in my head, and I have a painting for every single song that I write that that really helps me to understand the colors and the dynamic and and everything within the aspect of that painting that can be translated in into something audio instead of visual. Um, but, but it really, really helps to direct my perception and, and focus and understanding of the identity of, of each different song. Julia is badass. <laughs> Couldn't be heavier. I think for this project, a lot of it has been, uh, Preston's been kind of, you guys have been kind of directing me as to what you guys want, your vision. Mm -hmm. And so I yeah. definitely just he hear what you're telling me and then do that and maybe stylize it at the end. Oh yeah, exactly. You know I mean? How old were you when you started? Well, out here I was... I think I was probably 16. I can remember having Stevie Wonder's phone number in my in my little book. Around here. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was a real kid. They are the backbone. Like they just like, yeah, my family is the backbone of exactly why I'm able to still do this. Um, I mean, the, their uh, support for me and, and all of these endeavors um, was and is so necessary that, I mean, I, I most certainly would not be here right now if it weren't for that support. I, I know, like I said, we only got like 14 more times and I may get it right. <laughs> it never fails that, you know, if somebody plays a great take and does something that's really inspired, you could record it on a boom box. <laughs> I feel like I have more music inside of me than a jukebox. Yeah, the album is called uh, An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of Edible Music. I wanted a very, very long 
title for the album that could be condensed into a nickname, as it were. When uh, when the album comes out, you know, it'll have the big album music on it, and then a uh, little tiny across the top, you know, an inquiry into the nature and causes of uh, so much fine print these days, you know. And, and music that can feed the soul, music that you can take in, music that nourishes, food for thought. And so, uh, you know, when you came up with that, I was like, it's perfect. And, uh, I think in terms of an introductory uh, debut set, that I can be playing with better cats than this. I mean, it, um, I I want to explore many, many different uh, different forms of music, different styles of music, different different sounds and experiences, uh, different reasons for the, the creation and um, different instruments, um, different orchestration, any, I, I just, I want to continually do different things and, and have that be the, the constant. I'm cloud nine, like, I, it, it's, it's sort of like everything that I always wished or like formulated for the optimum has sort of materialized and uh, it's all happened very recently and very quickly. And uh, I always thought I was ready for it, so now I get to find out, you know? <laughs>